folks, this is Dre Recovery One Drones. I'm here to t talk to you today about the Matrice 30T. I was able to acquire this uh, new drone, recently released drone, I should say. I think it was released back in late March, early April. But I found myself to go ahead and make this purchase. So this is not a demo, or this video is not sponsored by DJI. This is all on me. And I want to talk about some of the things that have not been talked about. Uh, if you've seen videos by Billy Kyle, uh, Aerial Influence, and a few others, I think there's a, another group down in Australia and some other places have talked about the obvious stuff, talks about the, the camera comparison to the M300 and the uh, Maverick uh, Enterprise Advance. But I was going to talk about the details since I do own this and I will be using this uh, in my business. Let's talk about some of the details that may not be covered, some of the things that will cover that are talked about. So we're going to go into or, you know, what's in the case. Uh, one of the surprising things I did, because spending this type of money, and it's in the area of uh, above 10 grand, you know, I'm not going to give exact figures, but it's above 10 grand figures that I'm talking about here, is what you get for that kind of money. Uh, the package comes in two different uh, carry-all cases. Uh, as you've seen the opening uh, scenes here, those were three cases. Uh, one was the uh, Mavic uh, uh, Enterprise Advance, the standard Mavic uh, 2 Pro, and also the Matrice uh, 30T in the opening of this video there. And uh, if you've seen some shortcuts of the Matrice uh, 30T, if we got to this point so far. But what you get also, uh, besides just the drone in the case, uh, the drone, the case itself, will uh, be able to hold four of the, of the new batteries for the drone. And that's one thing I want to cover, is the batteries themselves. <clears throat> what really impressed me uh, is the batteries. Uh, they have a built-in vent system in the batteries along the lower bottom edge to aid in the dissipation of the heat that is generated by these batteries. Now people talk about the size of these batteries and the cost of these batteries but I like to be very practical. This drone requires <clears throat> two batteries to operate and it talks about uh, perfect conditions, laboratory conditions of uh, 40, 41 minutes real time, uh, actual time, you may get somewhere around the mid to lower 30s. And, and, and the reason why I bring that up is the fact that being a uh, commercial pilot myself, I factor in how I fly, how I manage my flights. And I manage how many batteries I'm going to need for any given flight. So given that it takes two batteries to operate this thing, and I'm only getting somewhere around uh, 30, let's call, let's call it even 33 minutes, okay? Now, what people don't understand, that 33 minutes is from 100% to 0%, okay, in real-life uh, activities. And then if we stretch it up to 35%, I'll give them 35%. You have to understand that you're going to need to save some of that time for your takeoff, and for your return home. So you actually don't even get the full 35 minutes of flight. Just like when I use my Phantom 4 Pros, when I do mapping, and I use my uh, Mavic 2 Pro for uh, additional work, for uh, video work and so forth, I only estimate 20 minutes tops per battery, okay? Because I know with either one of those batteries, I'm going to peak out somewhere between 24 and 25 minutes on average. Uh, some a little more, maybe less. But if I figure out a solid 20 minutes, which usually brings me in right about the 30% mark in that area, I will have enough power to make sure uh, my drone is able to return uh, without any issues. In the same way, when you manage your flights, uh, you want to try to figure out that if you can, if you're doing a mapping where you're going back and forth and you position yourself in the right right area 
you want to catch that drone coming back close to where the takeoff point is when it comes to that uh, in, into that cycle. So what I'm saying is as it, as it gets down to the low 30s, if that drone is coming back towards you, that's when you want to go ahead and bring it home uh, at that time. So that way is when you put a fresh battery in, it does not have to use up as much battery uh, capacity to get back on track and start its flight path again. So you're able to get a little bit more out of the batteries. So once again, talking with these batteries, I will estimate for a pair of these batteries. Remember, we're talking about a pair. I will probably give my a safe estimate of about maybe uh, 30 to 32 minutes uh, at that month. And I figure even with 32 minutes a time, two sets of batteries would just put me over an hour worth of work on a site. I only have one current site that takes me just right at an hour, maybe a few minutes above that uh, when I use uh, my... Uh, phantom batteries if I do mapping. So it's already been on my mind that I'm going to have to go ahead and spend uh, basically about 650 bucks on a third set of batteries to ensure that well, I will not have enough batteries to complete any job that I may encounter. Now normally, like I said, normally some of these uh, jobs that I do use about three batteries to cover somewhere around 180, 190 acres of land. So like I said, I've been out there. I know what how far these batteries can take you at any given time. And I don't think uh, these batteries are anything special. I think the extra power that's in these batteries is to accommodate all the additional power in the motors, uh, all the additional electronics that come in, come in this drone. So like I said, I do like to design the batteries because heat is always an issue that we have to worry about. And having these little uh, vents at the lower parts of the battery towards the rear is a, uh, a big thing to me. So the, in other words, the battery did not uh, get heated very quickly. Uh, reports I've read is that this drone should not uh, exceed over 100, and I think it's 105 degrees Fahrenheit at any given time, no matter what the ambient temperature, temperatures are. I know from experience, I have, I have had my Phantom 4 batteries and Maverick 2 Pro batteries exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So like I said, the design of this battery is good. They don't uh, hold heat like the other ones do, the old ones do. So that's what made me a little more comfortable in making this purchase as far as the battery goes. The next part I'm gonna talk about is the back of the drone itself. Uh, DJI has gone away from cooling systems internally on some of the drones, and I, you know, have to say that kind of started with uh, the Mavic uh, series by making drones a lot, lot more sleeker, a lot more compact, and everything else, which cut back on ventilation of the drone itself. The older Phantom series uh, had ventilations uh, in the frame, uh, and the Phantom 3 Pros they even had a real small fan to keep the uh, electronics on the camera cool. And then they started going inside with the Phantom 4 series. And by the time we broke out with the uh, Mavic series, a lot of the cooling elements have disappeared on the outer skins of the uh, airframe, except for behind the camera itself. So what basically, as long as the drone was flying forward, it was getting cooled. But once again, you need to have exit points of cooling areas. And the battery compartment never had any exit uh, as far as cooling areas to let air come in and let air come out to let the heat dissipate from the battery. And which resulted in uh, people over the years, we know we had swelling issues from the Maverick uh, Pro, the original one. Uh, had a lot of issues with the Maverick 2 Pro as far as swelling and the zoom. And uh, people were talking about even with this latest one come out, the Mini 3 Pro, how hot it can get because it is basically an enclosed system that does not have any means of cooling unless it's flying. So those are things you talk about when you talk about commercial work like I do. A lot of times we're not flying forward. A lot of times we're flying sideways, okay? Because we're doing orbits and things of that nature or we're taking still shots where the drone is in one position and then you may, as we say, slide over to another position. You're not always flying forward. 
So uh, that adds to heat because there's no way to cool off the drone. So this is another factor I looked at on this one. And in the back of it, you see uh, the drone has a black screen right above the battery. And when you turn this thing on, you will hear the internal fans starting right away, pushing that hot air out to the rear of the drone itself. So it is constantly cooling itself with internal fans, which is another big plus. The obvious things about this drone, like I said, it has sensors uh, all around it. You got a total of something like uh, nine, nine sensors. It's even more than that. Might be up to 12 sensors. You got like uh, four, four or five on each side, the pair in the front, uh, another set in the rear, top and bottoms. So you got quite a bit of sensors to go all the way around. But like I said, I've said in, in past uh, videos, never, de never rely upon your sensors to make you a, a, a confident pilot. You have to remain, uh, remain confident in your own skill set. Keep your visual line of sight. Know what your hard deck is. And in case you guys have never heard that term, the hard deck is basically an area that you have set that you may run into this, different obstacles during your flight. And you need to be mindful of what that altitude is. So if you have to drop below that level, you will be more cautious in your flights. And that's why I call the hard deck area. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, we're going to go through a few other things. The battery uh, charger itself uh, accommodates up to four sets of battery, four sets, which are total eight batteries. And it also charges the older uh, battery that came with the Crystal Skies and, uh, and some of the And the uh, other uh, other remote controls for uh, enterprise levels. So I have about four or five of those. So that helps the controller uh, one to be up to uh, six hours of uh, power to fly, which is a good thing. Other than that, the remote control is I would say the biggest learning curve uh, with this whole system. The drone itself flies. Excellently, it's just like flying a larger uh, Mavic 2 Pro, in my opinion. Uh, you can control it if you can control the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, but the controller itself, the RC controller, is has a steep learning curve because there's just so many functions, so many different buttons on this thing that do so many different things, and that you become can become distracted and just trying to figure out what you want to do and achieve. On the controller which can add to you losing uh, sight of your uh, drone and what's it doing at the same time but like you say it allows you to, to make the drone custom customize you can uh, repurpose a lot of the buttons there's a total of six buttons just off to the left and right of the screen that can be customized or you can keep them standard there for the different uh, zoom in zoom out change the different camera views you know, and you also have the, another set of buttons right right off the uh, video and camera uh, capture uh, buttons. And then you have the standard C1s and C2s on the back of it. What this brings to mind is this controller is very large and it has a lot of buttons. And you would think for such a large controller, the nice 7-inch seven -inch, seven -inch screen, that you should be able to grab this thing anywhere. But what you'll find out, uh, with this large controller and with all these buttons, you can accidentally hit a button and you will never know what you did <laughs> in a lot of cases. So you have to be mindful. I hope that uh, there will be some type of a strap system uh, harness that would be sold that you can put on this controller. Cause I know there's uh, two holes at the top and two holes at the bottom uh, that can be you know used with a lanyard to help uh, hopefully balance this thing out. Because, I mean, if you're going to be out there all day, that's just another thing you have to worry about fatiguing with is holding this controller while you're flying. Uh, it is big enough that it will accommodate both uh, pinchers and thumbers. Uh, no problem there. So everybody would be comfortable in how, what type of a uh, flyer you are as far as the controls itself. Uh, one of the biggest things I was uh, impressed with is the, uh, the zoom camera. Uh, this drone will tell on your ability to fly. Uh, you know, now I'm going to show you some clips here of me flying a, a orbit and with the wide view camera. Uh, even with the uh, 
thermal cam. I don't think I'll put that on there, but uh, basically two different modes. I'm flying a nice smooth orbit, I think. I put it in the zoom mode, the zoom camera, and then you see the small little variations that I you know that most of us do when we do fly manually. And uh, this will tell on you and tell on your abilities. I've seen other folks, I think I remember watching Billy Kyle's video when he was trying to zoom in on a vehicle and how difficult time he had. And he had, you know, other than the, the, the tracking uh, portion software in the drone itself, uh, there's hardly any way you can uh, <clears throat> maintain a, uh, a good visual on, on a subject or uh, a moving, moving object. Or if you're moving, maintain that uh, that good uh, view uh, without losing it, especially if you're in uh, extended zoom mode. It is just very difficult. But it really lets you know that you, know, you need to brush up on your skills. So I don't want to make this video too long. I'm going to show a couple of uh, aerial flights here uh, that I did. I didn't do a whole lot. I was trying to get this video out. Uh, a lot of folks been asking for it, so I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time. But I'm very pleased with this purchase. I think it's going to uh, be a major asset uh, with my my company uh, now that I have both uh, the Enterprise Advance and now this uh, N30T.